Hello! Today we're going to learn how to make grout formicariums for your ants. You're going to start with a picture frame. I'm going to use a 5 by 7 for this time. You can get them at the dollar stores or any garage sales. You're going to make your clay. You can make it on a bigger piece of glass so it's a little bit easier to pour. You see I got some clay right here. And we're going to use a frame to hold our grout when we pour it. It can be made from paper, plastic, anything rigid. I like to use wood that I made for this purpose. I'm going to put it right on. I'm just going to center it a bit. Oh, I have this for the watering. This is going to be our watering tunnel. So here's our rest of our tunnels. But in order for you to get water in here, it's got to run along the way. So we're just going to stick that in there. And use this to keep the grout out of this end. And as we put that on, just angle it up and over. And we stick it. We're going to use two little blobs of clay in opposite corners. They'll make sure that this doesn't move as we pour or as we mess with it. Okay, there's our clay. It's on a sheet of glass so it's nice and smooth. If you don't have a bigger piece of glass, you can use the piece of glass in your 5x7 frame for it. Just put it on a really rigid, hard surface like a plastic serving tray. I cover mine in um, saran wrap just to avoid big messes. Okay, so this is done. Now we're going to use any kind of cooking oil. Uh, the light ones or the extra virgin olive oils work really well. I like this kind of paintbrush. This will help us keep the grout from sticking. So here we go. Just pour a little bit in there. And we're going to make a really light sheen all the way around especially on the walls, because I make it much easier to take it off afterwards. Be careful around our air tunnel. The air tunnel is just a quarter inch piece of aquarium to be meant for the air pumps. You can even get it at the hardware stores. It's just a quarter inch. Paint, 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 paint. Make sure you get the corners really good. Make sure all the glass and all of the pieces of the surface tunnel are well coated. You don't need much. As long as it shines with wetness, it'll work. The kind of clay I use is called Craft Smart Plasticine Clay. It's an oil-based clay that never dries out. I usually get it from Michaels. I find it's one of the best clays to work, so it doesn't dry out, doesn't cause the grout to crack, and it's reusable, which is excellent. There, oil's done. Okay, it's there, it's oiled. Okay, we're going to use two layers of grout. The layer closest to the tunnels is going to be very porous with perlite. And that will allow for water absorbency, which is better. And the top layer on this, which will be our bottom when we're done, is going to be sanded grout, which is more or less waterproof, which will keep the um, water beading to a minimum. And if your ants really like to dig, it should stop them. So our layer closest to the tunnels is called sanded grout. We're going to use a gray. And our sanded grout at the end is going to be black. OK. I like to use bamboo skewers, a cup, nice, disposable, minimal cleanup. I don't really measure, so I'm just going to give you the ratios. For sanded grout, you're going to use about one to two of grout to one of perlite. This perlite has been crushed with the rolling pin inside of a plastic bag. The bigger stuff's not quite absorbent enough, so. You add the water first, 
because it keeps the stuff from sticking to the bottom. So you can always add more water, more grout, more perlite. The grout is quite dusty, so if you have allergies to dust, I advise a dust mask or just something to stop the really fine powder. The perlite's really bad for dust too, and that one you don't really want to inhale. We're going to stir this to a pancake-like consistency. It's still pretty watery. For some reason, non-sanded grout takes more water than sanded grout. Just keep that in mind as you mix. Yeah, see it's still more like water? Grout tape will continue setting for 10 to 15 minutes. So if yours is just a little bit thin, you can either just keep stirring and waiting, or you can just take shortcuts and keep adding stuff. Just to keep our ratios pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. I have had straight non-sanded grout work, but it wasn't the best. It only kept the chambers that were really, really close to the tunnels with dampness. So, there we go. This will thicken pretty quick. You notice the air bubbles? I'm going side to side to pop them, because if they appear next to your tunnels, there's gonna be a hole there afterwards. Easily patched, but just a bit unsightly. <coughs> okay. When pouring, we're going to try and pour directly onto the surface there. We're going to use the skewer to make sure it gets into all the little nooks and crannies. And always pour on top of what you've always poured before, because that helps prevent your air bubbles. Or any little pieces where you trap any of the oil. Just keep mixing as you go. The perlite likes to float to the top, mixing just keeps it. I use the small cups because I would rather mix two or three batches than to make a batch that's too big, the wrong consistency, and so on. I'm just leveling this out a bit. Because I find unsanded grout is much easier to clean than sanded grout. Okay, one thing that you can do is optional. Take a small pinch and lightly sprinkle a little bit, especially over the water tunnel. You don't want too much or it could crack the tunnels in behind later as it dries, but I'm just going to push some grout up to this. As you add water to your tunnel, it can become airlocked, so I add a small layer of perlite right along the water tunnel to allow air to escape as we inject the water. So if we can just see that. Okay, those tunnels are deep enough. I don't see any clay showing, so that's good. You can usually use at least a centimeter, but I'm lazy, and if you're careful, you really don't need it. So, put him away. Don't need the perlite anymore either. We're going to get another cup, and we're going to move on to the sanded grout. And with that, we're going to use sand. I just buy a big bag of play sand for three bucks at Canadian Tire or any of your hardware stores. Once again, we're going to pour water. This stuff doesn't need quite as much water, but because we're going to be making more of it, you can use the same amount. Uh, sand and grout and sand, you use a ratio of one to one. The sand adds strength to the grout, kind of like putting stone into cement. This will be really brittle until it's cured for about a week, and then it becomes really strong. It's easier to stir, keep adding, and keep stirring. 
and it is to put a whole bunch of stuff in. Okay, sorry, the camera turned off on me. So we're going to keep stirring. Okay, it's still pretty watery. With sanded grout, the water really likes to raise to the top. So, you feel it more than you can see it. Need some more grout in there. You want it at a fairly thickish consistency, a little bit thicker than the last one, but not much. At least for the first bit here. As you can see, it takes a little while to stir it in. Okay, with this, we're going to pour along the edges. So if we poured it straight in the tunnels, it would push that lighter stuff out of the way, and we would see it through the tunnels, which we don't want. So get as low as you can, just dribble it in along the sides. Just mix it to keep the water going. Okay, keep putting it at the edges. You can see we're not moving anything. Keep putting it at the edges. It's easier to move it away from the edges than it is to try and have problems with the other grout. are so useful. Okay, as you see, I didn't have quite enough, but it doesn't bother me. Another batch. when you add so much in at once. But once you get it working, it starts to go. This is still a bit thin. Now, as we go over this, oh, it's still not quite thick enough. So the less water this, there is in this, is the less it has to evaporate out as it cures. And the last that can run up underneath the edge of your molding. If you're using really watery grout, you can run a small bead of clay all around your form, and that will keep your messes a lot less. There we go. As we go on top, we're going to carefully ladle it. As you see, some of the rest of the clay got pushed up some of the smaller stuff. I'm not too, too worried about that. The rest of it stays down. Corners, level it out. Ah, good enough. Okay. Now I use a skewer or any cement leveling tool to kind of level it. My favorite trick grab your tray, a quick side to side. But you see, some of your waters and stuff are coming out. You can't really see it on this side. So, really good trick, piece of paper towel. This will absorb a great amount of the water, reducing your drying time by several hours. And this can absorb lots of your water that comes out the bottom. It helps keep messes to a minimum. And also when you tap this down, it is very nice because that also works as a leveling and adds a nice pattern to the back. There, see? 
we pulled off probably a good tablespoon worth of water. So this is done. It has to dry for 24 hours before the next step.